Hi everyone, it's Kat here, and I'm back with another project to share, part of a series I'm going to do, possibly long term, we'll see how it goes. I'm calling it, Let's Make This From That, and it's basically using simple materials to make something really cool. So it's sort of like a take on the trash to treasure thing, you know, you use things from your kitchen, you recycle things, you use from your stash dollar store, Walmart, supermarket, whatever. Um, so basically we're going to be making glassine bags that are hinged, like my prototype that I'm showing here. And here's another prototype that I painted in the last video, the green one. And basically it's got pockets on the front and on the inside and it's made with parchment paper. And the hinge is so that you can see the back and even put a pocket, embellish it, whatever, but you don't have to glue it down. The idea is it turns like any other page. And on the front I'm showing you that it has one pocket in the very front, one behind that, and then one on the inside. Here I'm showing that you can use deli papers to make it, but since most people have parchment paper more readily available, I'm using that. And then these acrylic sprays, which I made in a previous, previous video, I'm using as a base coat which I showed on this other prototype with the leaves. And these particular bags I made out of the deli paper just to test it out. But today's we're going to be making with the parchment paper. And on the prototype I had used these makeup sponges to put oxide ink through the stencil. And the base coat of course was the acrylic sprays. And then I used the napkin for the hinge because I, um, I had a little problem. I made a mistake. Uh, and I had to flip it the other way, so I improvised and used a napkin for the hinge. But today we're going to cut the parchment paper so that that is your hinge. And then here I'm also showing how I have stitching up the sides and I used a ribbon to give a finishing touch to these deli paper pockets. But for today, um, we're using the sprays, the distress paints, and distress inks through the stencil. And then we're using napkins, which I'm showing a sample of here. Some of these are from Dollar Tree, from Joann's, from Party City. Lots of different colors, some more summery, some more fall. But today I just felt like creating something fall theme. So on the prototype, I'm demonstrating that I had used a base coat of both gold and copper metallic sheen sprays. But today I'm only going to use the gold because I want the leaves to pop more against a lighter shade. So basically you take a piece of parchment paper, which I'm measuring out here, you pull a strip out of the box that's roughly 16 to 18 inches in length, and then you cut that in half, and we're working with just the half. Then you take that half and fold that in half, only because it's easier to cut it with it folded in half so both sides are the same because it wants to slip and slide a lot, a lot because of the nature of the parchment paper. So we're going to cut it. And here I have my measurements. I uh, will, excuse me, I will put them down below in the description box. But basically, as I'm showing in the sample here, we're cutting the whole thing to include the flaps and the hinge. The width is going to be six and three quarters, with three quarters of it being the hinge. And I'm showing the other sample I have here. This green one I made in the, I believe it was in the previous video where I was showing the acrylic mixture sprays that I uh, work with, my process video. Um, oh, and I'm explaining about the hinge thing, which I'll, <laughs> I'll go into in a minute. But anyway, um, I'm showing that as a sample and then now I'm cutting down the width which again is six and three quarters. And then the height is seven and a half inches. Of course, you can make it whatever dimensions you want, whatever will fit your project. And then now I'm going to score it for the hinge, which the hinge is three quarter inch, although it looks more like an inch to me, but you know, you could make it whatever you want depending on the thickness of your signature and how far in you want it to go. You could also make it a full sheet and a double pocket to go around either side of the signature, but, and then I, uh, I scored the flap, which is one inch in size. And basically 
you want to keep both sides of the flap and I'll explain that in a minute but here I'm using the ruler and the bone folder to score where I'm cutting the flap and then I take a piece of the cut piece and use that as a guide to help me score the other side of the flap where I cut that as well and now I'm cutting the bottom portion of the hinge and the scoring really helps with getting the cut line straight and then there you go there's the base for your glassine bag with a hinge and here are the sprays that is a um, a basic acrylic paint that I got from Target which I think you could still get at Michaels and Walmart and whatnot that is the gold one so I put uh, paper down and then up protecting my workspace and the stuff that I have there but you could just use a box and there's the BBs that I got at Walmart it's like six thousand of them for six or seven dollars and I'm explaining that I added that to my acrylic sprays so that the mica shakes better or the acrylic paint for that matter and then I sprayed down the entire uh, glassine bag which is made out of parchment paper so I don't know if technically we can call it a glassine bag but anyway I'm spraying it down with the spray and then blotting up the little pools and puddles and then using my heat tool to dry it and then blotting it some more and you can see how pretty that's coming out now at first it may seem like it's not going to stick like it's just rolling off but be patient trust me this does work acrylic paint has a sort of plasticky kind of consistency to it so it wants to sort of sit on top of the surface and eventually as you can see it starts to adhere really well you just have to be patient you keep spraying it blotting it drying it and eventually you there you go really pretty very shimmery I even want to make another one of those just plain because it's so pretty it would be nice for some sort of wedding theme and there's the model for the fall theme and uh, you know you basically want to add layers based on how dark you want the colors you really do it according to what you like so here I'm using a sort of fabric -y kind of medical tape to hold down the bag and the stencil this is a Tim Holtz uh, leaf stencil and then I use these makeup wedges to apply the inks and paints um, these makeup wedges you can get at Dollar Tree Walmart supermarkets they're really helpful for so many things and they're pretty cheap too and I also want to pass on the tip that it's important that you lay down your um, inks first. Okay, so here it skipped to the end of when I finished the front side because I had lost the footage. I apologize for that. But it's not a big deal because I do the whole thing, um, excuse me, the same thing all over again on the other side. But this time I'm using a smaller stencil. And this is an Echo Park leaf stencil, which I got last year so I'm taping that down and I'm going to do the back side but as you can see the front came out really pretty and the process is pretty much the same um, I apologize about that lost footage so here I am going down with the red first because it's one of the most vibrant colors and I'm sort of randomly doing it but making sure there's a balance of cover um, excuse me color all over the surface and wiping off any excess I get off the edges although if it's in the hinge it doesn't matter as much because you probably won't see most of it and after the red I go in with the orange and I try to switch around the sponges so that I don't cross contaminate but at times I will just rub it off on the surface underneath to um, to clean it off and sometimes reuse parts of it or maybe I'll rotate or turn the sponges and whatnot and it's important to note that I do the inks first so that I'm not dipping um, if you were to do the uh, distress paints first which is essentially an acrylic spray then when you go to do the inks you'd be dipping the sponge into the acrylic paint and I found this out the hard way 
because on the front side I did it the opposite way and I had to keep using clean new sponges just so I wouldn't contaminate my ink pad. So that's an easier way around it by doing the ink first. So now I'm going in with the Distress Paints and then they go down really thick and a little bit um, a little bit heavy for this so I go over it once I've um, you once I've put down the distress paint I go over it with the sponges to uh, dab it and even it out I really liked the green here it broke up all of the uh, warm colors really nicely and in between again I'm wiping off on my work surface which you'll see in a minute I I show the the colors and how nice it looks and it gets really yummy. I'm looking forward to using that material in, um, I don't know, you can use it with punches and mixed media. I mean, there's so many ideas that it's hard to remember them all, but it's a really beautiful blend of colors that will prove really useful, sort of like jelly prints, you know? You can use them for endless things. So I'm still uh, going back and forth, lifting up the stencil, seeing where it might need more color and that looks really good. Wiping off anything that fell into the hinge, but again, it doesn't matter because you probably won't see it. Oh, and I'm demonstrating that when I pulled up the tape, it pulled off some of the, um, the base gold because we haven't used a fixative spray yet. So I basically go in, spray some of it on my work surface and dab that area with my finger, almost like a paintbrush. And then I dab, dry, dab, dry, and fill it in, and you can hardly tell that it's there. So now I'm putting the stencil down again to get the upper area, because the stencil wasn't big enough to cover the whole bag. And then I'm using this paper punch to hold down the bottom part of the bag, because I learned that if you use tape, it might pull up the paint before you use the fixative. So that is holding it down while I go over the top with basically a similar combination of the, uh, the inks and paints. And um, while I have a moment here, I want to take the opportunity to tell you that I'm doing this video in a sped up voiceover version, which is a little out of my comfort zone. I tend to like to make videos. I like watching both kinds, but I tend to make videos where it's a sort of craft with me real time and I like to give lots of um, tips and hints and such. Um, but I wanted to try something different and, you know, see how this goes and do this sped up version. The original of this video is like an hour and 20 minutes, so I'm going to break it up into two videos and I'm going to post that as well. And there's good points and bad points to both. Of course, this is quicker, takes less of your time. But the other video, I have a lot more tips and tricks and pointers for you, and I explain my thought process and whatnot. Um, and that's really more my wheelhouse. This is, like I said, a little out of my comfort zone, but I, I want to see what works for me, and I also want to see if I could make viewers, you know, happier. And, you know, I know your time is precious, so possibly this might be better for you, seeing, you know, a general summary of what I'm doing here. So I finished up that top portion, and now I'm just blotting it, and then I'm going to dry it all with my heat tool and clean up my work space. But both sides have come out really beautiful. I'm very happy with the results. And then got my fingers nice and inky. So there you go. It's all dry and ready to go for sewing and adding my napkin pockets and everything. I'm really happy with how this came out. Oh, first I'm going to have to put on the fixative spray, and I'm showing you my work surface here. I'm loving how yummy that looks for using in projects. So this is a low odor, clear finish Krylon fixative spray. Don't believe the low, um, excuse me, low odor part, by the way. I, I also used it on that plaid prototype project, by the way. So I'm going to off camera spray the whole thing down, which I've already done now and then I dried it really well. So now the paint and the stenciling should all stay on and not come off with the fixative spray. But anyway, I recommend doing the spray outside because it's very smelly and it um, probably isn't good for you. 
and I'm also admiring the work surface again. So I cleaned that up and then I'm showing you the bag all ready to go. But first I'm um, burnishing the creases again because through each part of the process where you get the bag wet, it loosens the creases. So you have to do that often. And then along with that, I'm showing you side by side the original test samples that I did of this leaf pattern and how much darker it is. Um, because on the first one I used, like I said, both the gold and copper and with just the straight gold as the base, the leaves pop a lot more. And that napkin was what inspired me to do this pattern. So now I'm basically explaining that you just pull the extra layers off the napkin, use a piece of tape. I mean, there's lots of videos out there that explains that. Then you take the napkin and you fold it back again to the way it was and then you fold that in half and burnish it, but you have to burnish it very slowly and very carefully because it wants to wrinkle. And then to keep from seeing the, um, the layers of the folds, you fold the very edge over on both sides to give it a more sort of hemmed kind of finished look. And here I explained that um, if you're not a sewer, you can use, sorry, I bumped my mic, you can use Fabri-Tac to glue down the edges, and that works just fine. Fabri-Tac is usually best with cloth-like materials, and it dries very quick and clear. Um, and you apply it to the inside of this fold, and then the other fold, and once that's done, you fold your napkin back in half, and then you're going to glue that down to the glassine bag. Um, I don't know how well other glues work with parchment type material, especially now that it's had a fixative spray put on it or whatever you use. Um, you could also probably use matte gel medium, I'm not sure if I said that already, or a cheap hairspray, but I haven't tried those. I can tell you that the fixative spray worked well for me. But you know, test these things out. And then here I'm showing you this dollar store lace that can work really well to look, you know, to have that finished look if you're not a sewer. Um, and then I show you the original, how I did the zigzag stitch, and that's what I'm going to be doing on this. And also I'm explaining that you need to account for the fact that the napkin might be bigger than the bag. So when you glue, make sure you put the glue in the right spots and then trim off the excess. And then I'm going to go off camera and sew this for you. And then I'm showing you this sample that I did. I did a leaf stitch, but the nature of the slippery material wants to bunch up. So I've decided that I'm going to go simpler and back to the zigzag stitch that I did on the original. And like I said, I did that off camera. So now you have two pockets on the front as well as the inner pocket. And it's hinged. And I love it. I think it's come out beautiful. Um, and then I'm showing you how the pockets work. There's one in the very front and then one behind that and then one on the inside. And I did the camera off screen because I'm a total beginner and I really wouldn't have much to offer there. I mean, I could in a future video show you my sewing, but as I said, I'm a total beginner. I got my machine like two or three months ago, so I'm still learning. Um, but if you want to see real, oh, my kitty decided to pay a visit and I showed him where the camera was. Uh, so here I'm just cutting off the inner flap because now I'm finally done and um, and now I can close that over so yeah but anyway if you want to see real pros with sewing I recommend Linda Israel and Wendy from Wendy's Journal Adventure I think is the name they're really great at sewing and uh, real pros I'm just a beginner so but I'm really happy with how this came out and then also I'm showing you that if you use a punch of some sort, a circle, whatever, you can glue down the bottom half and not the top half and then tuck the flap into that. You could use washi tape. There's lots of ways. You can use the thing that you put in the pocket to keep, you know, to tuck the flap into. There's lots of ways to keep the flap down. And now I'm going to go into the embellishing part. Um, also I should note here that doing the double pocket thing was totally inspired by Linda Israel because lately I've been watching a lot of her videos and she is so cool with pockets. She does lots of interesting, cool 
designs with pockets and multi pockets so that was totally inspired by her the napkin part was um, something I came up with I have such a collection of napkins that I've been gathering for like two years now because I'm totally into that and I see it's a trend now so rather than just decoupaging I wanted to make the pocket so here I'm embellishing with a package of Dollar Tree leaves um, some of them are the sort of plasticky types and some are burlap I love the burlap trying them out see how they look I may cut them down <clears throat> I have a, a bag of fall confetti here I got from Party City I think and you can use that I have a sheet of stickers here from Dollar Tree with feathers and they have sort of autumn colors you could use that flowers whatever there's a lot of options so anyway I'm really happy with how this came out and it will look good in a fall themed journal and we just made that from parchment paper so I hope you enjoyed this I hope you give it a try if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe and share it because all of these things inspire me to keep and motivate me to keep doing this for you and I love to share so um, I will see you again in the next video and don't forget to check out the other longer one if you want more details and more um, ideas about my process so thank you for watching today and I'll see you soon have a good day bye